So the next thing we're going to talk about is reducing fractions. And I talked about that a little bit earlier on how reducing fractions would help us find the simplest answer. And that's basically what it is. It's for when we have a fraction that's not in lowest terms, we like to say. And what that means is that the denominator and the numerator do have common factors. So we can make the fraction smaller. Okay, so if we looked at something like 24, use a color, 24 over 108. Okay, well, if we were to look at factors, 24 can be divided by 1 in itself, 2 and 12, and maybe a couple other ones in there. But this is really all we have to look at for now. 108, 1 and 108. And since it's even, we know it can be divided by 2 and something else, and a whole bunch of other ones probably. Now, we can see that both of them can be divided by two, therefore we know that this, fa this fraction is not in lowest terms. So how do we get into lowest terms? You might be able to come to a conclusion just by looking at it right now and what we've done, but what we wanna do from here is I wanna divide by two, right? So I found that they both can be divided by two, so I'm gonna divide them by two. So I get 12 over 54. Pretty simple, right? But okay, if I were to do this again, if I look at these factors, 12 is 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4, and 54. Well, 1 and 54, 2, oh, they both have 2. 2 and something, because it's even. So, what are we going to do? We're going to divide by 2 one more time. So that would give me 6 over 27. Now you might think there, there might not be anything left to divide by here, but let's double check those factors real quick. 1 and 6, 2 and 3. Okay, and we look at 27, we know 1 and 27, 3. Does 3 go into 27? Now, we know that 3 goes into 27 nine times. Okay, so now we both have 3, so we're going to divide by 3 this time. So I get 2 over 27 divided by 3, we said was 9. And this is our reduced fraction, 2 over 9. Pretty long process for that one but you'll see that some of them aren't this complicated. But it's basically, if we remember, we're gonna wanna check those factors. Because if they have factors in common, that means they're not in lowest terms. That's the big thing to remember here. So if we take a look at another example, I want to reduce 10 over 35, 10 divided by 35. Okay, so one of the big things that I know about the number 10 is its biggest factor that's not itself is five. So I know I can divide this by five. Now the cool thing that we can remember too is 35, okay? So any number ending in five can also be divided by five. Five or zero, right? So since they both can be divided by 5, this is pretty simple. I can just divide them both by 5. So then I'll get 2 over 7, and that's as reduced as that fraction is going to get. Okay, we'll try one more example. So we want to reduce 8 divided by 12. Okay, so another quick cheat here. 8 is even. 12 is also even. So we know we can divide by 2 here. So 8 divided by 2 is 4. 12 divided by 2 is 6. But again, even. So we're going to divide by 2 again. 2 over 6 divided by 2 is 3. And that's as far as we can get. But now, 
We, can t we know all the factors for 8 and 12, so why don't we double check what that would look like? So we know 8, 1, 2, 4, and 8. Those are all the factors for 8. For 12, we know we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. Now what do we notice about this? Yes, we divided by 2 twice, but the other common number that the two have between them is 4, and that's their largest common factor. And we've talked about this before, our LCF. Ooh. LCF. So what happens if I take 8, and 8 over 12, 8 over 12, and I divide 8 by 4 and 12 by 4 instead of just 2 twice? Well, 8 divided by 4 is 2, and 12 divided by 4 is 3, and that gives us, look at that, the same answer as we had going the other route. So this tells us that if we find the largest common factor between a fraction that isn't in lowest terms, that we can divide by that largest common factor to get our fraction in lowest terms. So that's just a quick cheat on that one. Next we're going to talk about mixed numbers. And we did talk about mixed numbers a little bit earlier. At the beginning, remember there's something like 1 and 1 over 2. That's a mixed number because we have a whole number. A whole number. And a fraction. Okay, so a mixed number. Oh, excuse me. A mixed number is a combination of a whole number and a fraction, right? Just said that. We touched on that above. Um, we can writ write them also as an improper fraction. So if we remember, an improper fraction is when our numerator is greater than our denomer denominator. I'm having such a hard time saying that, <laughs> that word today. But yes, our numerator is greater than our denominator. So... How can we get an improper number into, well first, okay, we started with this mixed, so we'll go from a mixed to an improper fraction. So I have 1 and 1 over 2. We'll start with that, since it's the, what I had wrote down first. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this whole number 1, I'm going to multiply it by 2, our denominator, and then I'm going, to, so I will do that first, 1 times 2 is 2. And then I'm going to add the numerator, 3, and we're going to keep that over our original denominator, okay? So 3 over 2 is the improper fraction for 1 and 1 over 2. So the big things to remember here is first, we're going to take the whole number and we're going to multiply it by the denominator. Next, we're going to take that number and we're going to add the numerator to it. And then finally, we are going to take that final number and put that over the original denominator. So those are our basic steps for going from a mixed number to an improper number. Mixed to improper. Those are our rules. Okay, so what? Multiply that whole number to that denominator. Add the numerator, take that added number and put it over the original denominator. Okay, so let's do a couple more examples here. So now I want three, I'll draw that a little bit bigger, three and two over five, 
to an improper fraction. Okay, so step one. We want to multiply three times five. Three times five. Three times five we know is 15. Now I need to add two. 15 plus two is 17. And our last one was place this number over the original denominator of five. And here is our improper fraction of three and two fifths. One more example here. We want to take three and five over six and we want to find the improper fraction. So again, three times six, we're multiplying the whole number by the denominator. Three times six is 18. And then, then I'm taking that result and I'm adding the numerator, which is five, which gives us 23. And then I'm taking my final result and I'm placing it over my original denominator. So I get 23 over six as my improper fraction. Okay. So now maybe we have an improper fraction and we want to get a mixed number, which happens all the time, right? Improper fractions aren't something that we like to look at. They sometimes make it easier for us to add mixed numbers, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on, but they're not something that we always like to, to see as a final answer. So what are our steps for improper to mixed number? So first we're gonna divide Notice how it's the opposite of multiply for this one. So we're going to divide the numerator by the denominator. Next, we're going to write down that whole number that we get. And even if we get a decimal, right, we're going to round down because we want a whole number. Our third step is we're going to write the remainder. And we're going to put that remainder over the original denominator. Okay, so this one, division, instead of multiplication, we're going to get a whole number. You're going to see we actually probably get a decimal number, but we're going to round down and we're going to find the remainder. And then that remainder will be used to go over the original denominator. Okay, so our first example here. We're going to take 11 over 4 and we want to see it in a mixed number. So okay, first step is the numerator divided by the denominator. So that is going to end up giving us a two point something 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 answer right but we're just going to need that two we're going to round down and keep that two and then here we know we know that four times two is eight and eleven minus eight is three so we have two with a remainder of three R meaning remainder. So now we know that this is my whole number and this is my remainder. So step two is to keep that whole number. So I get to write down that whole number and I get to write down three and that'll be over our original denominator which was four. So two and three quarters is the mixed number of 11 over four. Okay, one more example for this will be 52 over nine to a mixed number. Now again, numerator divided by denominator. 
this gives us five probably with a bunch of decimals if you remember okay round down we're gonna keep that five and that also gives us then a remainder of okay are we not sure off the top of our heads then we can easily do nine times five is 45 52 minus 45 is seven so seven's my remainder seven now I take this five it's my whole number and the seven is my numerator over my original denominator of nine so I get five and seven over nine as my mixed number pretty straightforward right we just need to remember for our improper to mixed we're going to divide numerator by denominator okay we're writing down that whole number not keeping any of that decimal then we're writing finding the remainder writing it down as our numerator and putting our original denominator underneath and then for mixed to improper backwards right multiply the whole number by the denominator then we're going to add the numerator and then we take that result and put, use it as our numerator put it over the original denominator so again in both of these we're using the original denominator okay so next we're going to talk about the addition and subtraction of fractions so um oh we use pink already <laughs> 